Hey, fellow coders, it's me, the Web3 Idiot. Welcome back to the second episode in our series on arrays. If you missed our first episode, go check it out. It covers all the basic methods that you will need in order to really take advantage of manipulating, sorting, finding, searching, and iterating through an array. Now, today is our first uh, I guess first episode, but really second episode, the first episode in which we attack a problem, a real problem. We're not just talking about how to use a method. We will be using methods. Uh, so today our question or our task is to sum up all of the elements in an array. Now, sum, what does that mean? Okay, let's say we're given a one, two, a three, and a four. A sum would be adding all of these elements or numbers inside of this array together and outputting the total. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. So we would output the number 10. It is, uh, I guess, pretty straightforward. We're just doing a quick math problem. And sometimes that can be a little tricky if you don't know how to get started and you're relatively new to JavaScript, or maybe uh, you just haven't seen a problem like this. Um, now, there are a couple ways that we can go about doing it. Um, one of the first ways that you probably came up with would be using a for loop. A for loop, the idea here would be that we use a loop to move through each index spot and add it to an external variable that we could call sum. So uh, we look at index one, uh, we look at index zero, which would be one. We look at index one, which would be two, index two, which would be three, and index three, which would be four. And we add those numbers into the sum. And then at the end of uh, the function, we will return the number that the sum represents. Now, if you uh, watched our last video, you know there's a couple methods we could use. Uh, one method that may uh, I guess come to mind, especially after looking at the for loop, would be the for each method. For this, uh, if you call the for each method on an array, it looks at every element and it does something or does something to or does something with that element. So this would be pretty much the same thing as a for loop. Um, so for each of these elements, we would take it and add it to an external variable. And our last one, which is dot reduce. Now this method, uh, it takes all of the elements in an array, it adds it to an accumulator, and it passes the accumulator down to the second element, adds the second element to the accumulator, and so on and so on. Uh, the main difference is that this reduce function, or this reduce method, uh, does not have an external variable. So the variable gets returned uh, by calling this method. Now the time complexity, we have a loop, a loop, and uh, this reduce, we'll look at every element inside of this array. So usually when you're adding numbers up, the best case scenario would be O of N because you have to add every single number. Uh, for a space complexity, this is referring to auxiliary space. Uh, so this right here would not take up any space. We're talking about extra space that we have to uh, take up. Uh, for our for loop, we have to make one single variable called sum to uh, act as the running count or the running accumulator for all the elements. So that would be O of 1. Same thing with the for each O of one and reduce. There's not an external one, but our best time complexity is always going to be big O of one. So the best uh, space complexity, sorry, space and time complexity is always O of one. So if you don't have any auxiliary uh, space or you don't have any auxiliary, uh, if you don't have to take any time, it's always gonna be O of one. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. Let's start with our first function, and we'll look at the for loop, and we're going to call this for and sum. We're going to do a for sum today where we pass in an array. Um, up here, for this for sum, we will init a variable which will hold the sum. So we'll say let sum, and of course, we will start at zero. 
because uh, we have not added anything to it. And then we'll come down here, we say for let i equal zero, i is less than array dot length, i increments or i plus plus. For here we say sum equals sum plus array of i. Wow, very cool. And then down here we would say return the sum. Uh, so this is one way of writing it. Another way of writing it would be getting rid of this. We don't need to do that. We can say plus equals. So we're just going ahead and adding it to this number instead of changing it, uh, changing sum to sum plus array of i. We're just adding this array of i to the current sum. Um, and then there's another thing we can do. We don't care about the index. So instead of using a for and let i, we can say for const number of array. And instead of array of i, we can say number. So because we don't care about the index and we just want to hit every single element inside the array, we can loop through them this way. So the idea here is that we take every number out of this array, add it to the sum, and then at the end we will return the sum. So let's go ahead and test it out. We'll do console log, we'll say for sum, and inside we'll pass the same array that we talked about before, one, two, three, and four. And if we run for sum, we will return the sum of 10, and hopefully that 10 will appear over here. Let's take a look. Yes, we do get a 10. Very good. Wonderful stuff. All right. So that is our for sum function, in which case uh, we use a for loop to gather our sum. Our next one, let's take a look. Function. And we have for each sum. For each, whoops. For each sum. We will also be passing it an array. Uh, similar to this five, these five lines of code, uh, we will be doing something similar. We'll only have three lines of code though. So we'll say let sum equal zero. We're doing the same thing. Array dot for each. And here, this is where we take our number and we pass it over this way. And we say sum plus equals number. So this line here, is doing exactly what this uh, these three lines do. We are taking the number out of the array or the element out of the array and adding it to the sum. And then at the end, we will say return sum. We'll come down here, we'll say console.log and we'll say for each sum, We'll pass in the same array, one, two, three, and four, and we will run it. And over here, we'll get 10 again. Very good, yes, we get another 10. And we have four each sum. So we had five lines of code, three lines of code, and I bet you can guess we'll only have one line of code for our next one. So uh, our last method that we'll be calling, which is uh, particularly useful when doing a sum, uh, function on an array is the reduce method. So we have function reduce sum, we'll pass it in an array. And here, this is pretty easy. All we're going to do is be returning return array, array, array dot reduce. And inside, we will pass first and accumulator and the current value very good and over here we'll say accumulator plus current value and zero yeah uh, so basically this zero means that we will start at this zero here this sum is represented by the accumulator and the current value represents the number that we pass in. So we do reduce. So we say accumulator, which is representing this variable here, current value, which represents the number we pass in. We add them together, add them together and pass it down. And this zero is 
this zero right here, the current value of sum or the starting point of sum, aka incubator, would be zero. Let's go ahead and do a quick console log, and we'll say console log will say reduce sum, and we'll pass in the exact same uh, array, and we will get hopefully another 10. And we do get another 10. Very good. So, uh, yeah, that was a, I tried to be as quick as possible. Um, I hope I didn't rush. If you have any questions or specific questions on any of these methods or any of these uh, loops or functions, anything like that, if I went too quickly, uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'll get back to you. I'll try and help you out a bit. And if you want a refresher on some methods that you can call on an array, please check out the first video of the series. It's a bit long. I know it's about 40 minutes, but a lot of very helpful and useful uh, methods that you can use as well as examples about how to use them. And uh, yeah, so this is three ways to do this. Some elements in an array. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little bit. and. Uh, yeah, see you next week. Thank you.